All right. This 15-year-old girl from San Jose named Audrey Pot recently committed suicide. She took her own life after three 16-year-old boys allegedly sexually assaulted her. And that's not all. Then they took those pictures and showed them to classmates at their high school and posted them online for everyone to see. Now, this case is making national headlines and is raising the question of what classifies as cyberbullying. Forget cyberbullying. She was raped. Joining me to talk about the case is defense attorney Anna Yum, who is also a prosecutor, uh, in case you're just turning, tuning in. Thanks for so, having me. Uh, I mean, I love having you because you're so knowledgeable, knowledgeable on both sides of the law here. So, I mean, this is rape, it's cyberbully, right. it's evil, number, it's everything. It's Steubenville Part 2, it really is, because it's so uncanny. The facts are so similar between what happened in Ohio, Taylor, and what happened here in San Jose. The only difference is that the victim in Ohio, in Ohio didn't kill herself. And the way that Audrey Potts killed, her, hung, killed herself was horrible. She hung herself in the bathroom of her family home. And this is just weeks after finding out that a picture of her passed out at a party and um, she had been allegedly sexually assaulted by three mm -hmm. friends of hers, people that she knew, three boys that she knew growing up since middle school. And not only that, but they had written on her. They had written some comments on her, on her what body What time parts. frame was this happening? Like how long? Um, did this, this was happen? at a party that occurred a couple weeks prior to her killing but herself. What's the time frame? How long ago? Oh, just recently. Okay. Just, just within the last month yeah. or two. It's funny and that the Steubenville case got lots of publicity and this one isn't get, didn't get as much. Exactly. And this one didn't get as much. And what's, what's interesting is because the victim passed away in this one. She took her own life. And we're talking about a 15-year-old From 15 the shame. Year from the shame girl. and being embarrassed. She committed suicide. And you know what this girl did? She reached out to her friends and she said, my life is over. She said, my life is over. I can't handle it anymore. Everyone at school knows because allegedly these three boys had um, shown this photograph of her to other kids in her high school. So, you know, when I, was in, when I was in high school and when I was a young kid, a bully could be someone who was maybe bigger than someone else and just picked on the, young, on the younger kids or the smaller kids. But now, with what social media entails mm -hmm. and what we talked about this in the previous segment, is that anyone can just hide behind a keyboard and start bullying someone else and saying hateful, mean, mean-spirited things. So she was... Assaulted and then cyber bullied, and it was also from was it from other peers as well, not just the kids who assaulted her. Right. right. Well, it's unclear right now as to whether other mm -hmm. peers had actually reached out to her and, and and intimidated her, but it is clear that she believed other people knew about the incident. And this is a very similar situation to Steubenville again, because in in this case, uh, Miss Potts had gone to a party, and it's unclear whether she fell asleep or whether she passed out from being intoxicated. But in any event, she finds out after the fact, just like the victim in Steubenville, that a, a photograph was circulated of her, a photograph depicting mm -hmm. her in a, uh, an incriminate, incriminating light, a sexually explicit photograph. Fifteen years old, um, can they hold the boys responsible for her death? Well, that's what, what would you do if you were prosecuting these boys? If I was a prosecutor, I would say this is, this is horrendous, especially in light of what's going on with Steubenville. If I was a prosecutor, I would say these boys need to be held accountable for their actions, right? A young girl is dead because of what these boys did, if I were the prosecutor. And, and these boys have already been arrested, and they're um, supposed to face proceedings in juvenile court regarding... Juvenile? Why wouldn't they try them as adults? And that's something that the judge would have to consider. Right now, it's juvenile. And that's what happened in Steubenville, if you remember, Taylor, that yeah. these two boys, when they were, when they were um, adjudicated, not convicted, but adjudicated, uh, they were looking at one to two years, whereas if they were tried as adults, they'd be looking at a number of years. It would be a significant difference. And the reason for that, Taylor, is because in juvenile court, it's all about rehabilitation. It's all about the kids and trying to rehabilitate them, not to necessarily punish them based upon the theory that their frontal lobes are not fully developed mm -hmm. when they're minors, right? And so the whole purpose of juvenile court is to re rehabilitate, not punish. Hey, I know some 50-year-old men where their frontal lobes lobes aren't <laughs> fully developed. And, and, and sure likewise, I could, age, probably, really? I could probably say the same thing, but the, from the court's perspective, juvenile, it's all about yeah. rehabilitation. Adult, it's all about punishment and holding someone accountable. So if I were to answer your question, if I were the prosecutor in the case, it would be about possession and dissemination of a photograph of a, a, a nude minor. It would be about sexual assault, sexual battery, right? Because there were, there were instances where people are saying that these boys uh, use their fingers to penetrate her, among other types of sexual conduct and sexual assault. Now, if I'm the defense attorney here, we're, we're, we would have to look at what kind of evidence do you have? Because unlike Steubenville, the victim's gone. 
She's mm -hmm. not around to testify. So what other witnesses are going to come forward? And we know, Taylor, how hard it is for kids to come forward well, the and talk about that it. She already said, I'm, I can't live my life. Right. And, I, and so, I have nothing to live for so now. If I'm the defense attorney, yeah. I'm asking, were these kids present at this party or is this something that she confided in them after the fact? Did these kids witness what happened? What about all the, the evidence, party? Anna? And that's what we would have to look at. That's what we would have to look at, Taylor. Anna, I don't want you representing boys <laughs> like that. <laughs> and we have to look. We have to look at both sides, though, right? And a good yeah. advocate can see both sides and argue both sides of the table, and that's something that certainly would have to be taken into consideration. Well, that's justice need to, needs to prevail for yeah, her. Absolutely, and absolutely. and and justice needs to be pre to prevail for her. And those boys are also entitled to a um, a fair trial and a, a good defense. As I'm as sorry. To us in if, our constitution, if they rape the girl, they're not entitled to anything. If you ask me, but. I'm That's a mother of four daughters, you know. Hello. And and you know what? It's what's very interesting about this case, Taylor, is that it's not just there's not just criminal implication, but there's yeah. civil implication because now the parents of Audrey Potts is filing a wrongful death action against the parents and the minors involved, the three boys. Love it. Uh, not you know, I don't I don't like people suing others for their loss. I don't like it, I don't believe in it. But if the judicial system is not gonna take care of these boys and set you know, have a firm message so other people can follow. Because, I mean, hello, this happens on one coast to the other, right? It, let's it stop does. These. It's bi-coastal. I mean, we're talking let's about... Let's set a message for parents and for kids. You better get your act together, parents. And, we're and, in a tight ship and be good parents. And there's some remedies with respect to cyberbullying. Yeah. And not just cyberbullying, like you said. It wasn't just about cyberbullying. Yeah, no. That was like the minor general. thing. It was... The assault, right? The, rape, the assault, the rape, the how they handled it allegedly after the fact. But there are remedies available to parents, and you know whether it's filing a civil harassment order if someone is harassing, if there's a pattern of abuse or pattern of harassment that serves no legitimate purpose. Yeah. Uh, going to the school and having the school take accountability. But I agree with you. I think parents do need to get involved, and it's no longer a slap on the wrist. A girl is dead. Yeah. <sighs> Let's stop all the craziness, I tell you. It's been a hard news week. Thank yes. you, Anna. Thank, thank you for having me.